We are always on the hunt for affordable audio gear, especially in today's economic climate. When we requested these speakers, we thought that they looked like a total steal at their sale price. But as you're well aware, prices can and do change, especially right now. So at full MSRP of $499 a pair, are they still a good value? Well, settle in, hit that like button, and subscribe as we take a look at and review the Yamaha NS F-150 tower speakers. The Yamaha NS F-150 is a classic tower loudspeaker in a two-way design that utilizes a one-inch soft dome tweeter mated to two six and a half inch woofers. It has a reported frequency response of 37 hertz to 30 kilohertz with a sensitivity of 88 dB into six ohms. Upon unboxing these speakers, I almost changed my mind about whether to review them all together because I was so taken aback by their build quality. Now, normally this is where I would dive into the speaker's build quality quality and design, but I'm saving that for later as I consider it to be this product's weakness. So let's just jump into how the Yamahas sound. I find a lot of budget speakers to be on the more forward or bright side, and the Yamaha isn't that. It's not neutral, but it is more tame than say a Yamo S809. There is definitely an emphasis on the bass and mid-range, which lends a bit of weight and body to this speaker, but I wouldn't call it fat. It has warmth in comparison to other budget speakers. At reasonable volumes, the tweeter is more or less composed. It does a very good job battling anomalies like sibilance while providing for a measure of articulation and extension. The Yamaha is fairly well balanced in that the coherence is pretty good top to bottom, and it plays to its strengths and minimizes its weaknesses in this way. That is, that is until you turn it up to 11. At high volumes, the Yamaha begins to fall to pieces. So if you were looking for a tower speaker that you could jam at say 85, 90 dB or greater, don't bother. Because at high volumes, the cabinet resonances really take over and the bass and mid-range just turn to mud. Yes, you're still gonna hear instruments and some separation and make out phrases, but they're, they're all just gonna start to smear together. Not to mention the mid-range starts to beam and exhibit some of that megaphone-like effect. And when it does that, the high frequencies, that tweeter, become over-accentuated. And when, they, when it does, it reveals the tweeter's darkest secret. And that is a very audible graininess. I'm not kidding. It sounds like little bits of sand and rock are inside the dome at high volumes. And this can become incredibly fatiguing if you are sensitive to high frequencies. But before you dismiss the NSF-150, turn things down to a more reasonable volume and suddenly the Yamaha regains its composure and honestly sounds pretty good. This is a speaker whose sound jives with a wide range of source material. We listen to everything from hip hop to classic rock on up to classical music and even jazz. And with the volume set between 50 and 75 dB, the presentation was enjoyable. Hell, it was even impressive. Bass was deep enough that the music felt grounded and textural. Maybe it wasn't the firmest, but that, that little bit of cabinet resonance did make the bass feel large, which I didn't mind. The mid-range was warmer, but it wasn't soft or recessed. Instead, it had very good presence. And the high frequencies had great extension and detail and possessed a lot of that shimmer, which kind of surprised me given that the tweeter's makeup isn't exactly state of the art. The best part of the Yamaha's performance has to be its soundstage. While not laser etched, the Yamaha does create a very large and encompassing soundstage. The center imaging is good, and this is arguably the best part of the soundstage performance as it relates to detail. On the whole, this is just a really fun loudspeaker that's very easy to get wrapped up in. Dynamics are good, but if you turn it up, you can expect to lose some of that composure, but within the Yamaha's butter zone, this speaker manages to be incredibly captivating. But before you go clicking the buy now button, here is the fine print I referred to earlier. First, this is one of the cheapest loudspeakers in terms of construction that I have ever encountered. Sure, it looks good from a distance. Squint real hard and you may even be forgiven in thinking that it's like a Technics G90, but get up close and personal with it and it's pretty bad. It comes in a high gloss black finish that is impossible to keep clean and I wouldn't recommend using it even a mild cleaner to try and wipe all the fingerprints off of it out of fear that you're going to just wipe away 
the very little amount of paint that Yamaha has used to cover up its thin MDF cabinet. Speaking of the cabinet, it is incredibly resonant. Knock on the side of it and all you're gonna hear is a hollow echo. There's very little bracing and likely even less dampening materials inside. Also, the port on the rear should come with a warning label. It's unfinished. Hell, it's not even sanded, making it very easy to get splinters or cut oneself. And the base, the base of the speaker is all one piece. So despite the appearance of spikes, they don't function like traditional spikes, making it near impossible to level this speaker on uneven surfaces. And even at this price point, the Yamaha's grills are just inexcusable, as was the decision to mount the grills on what is essentially non-countersunk screw heads. I mean, come on. If Yamo can give us stylish magnetic grills at and below this price point, what is Yamaha's excuse? The Yamaha for me is a bit of a Jekyll and Hyde situation. On one hand, they can be nice to look at and even sound good, but get too close or anger them and you're gonna find their dark side pretty quickly. While they're worth putting on the list of budget contenders, they are by no means a no-brainer in terms of a recommendation. So if you have a budget of about 500 bucks and are shopping for towers, here are some other options to consider. First up, the Yamo S809s, which are built to a higher standard, have more finish options, and let's just be honest, look better and cost less, which makes me question Yamaha's current pricing even more. Let's talk sound. While the Yamos may be potentially a little bit more forward and lively, they are far more controlled top to bottom, especially in the bass department. While they may not have the feeling of possessing as much bass as the Yamaha, the bass that the Yamos do have is faster and far more composed. I will admit the Yamo S809s can get a bit aggressive when pushed, but you can solve that forwardness with a little bit of tone control if you want, whereas the Yamahas, that graininess, well, that's just inherent to the tweeter at high volumes. So if I had to pick between these two speakers, I'm picking the S809s, assuming you can get your hands on a pair because they have been out of stock for the last couple of months. But as of this video, they are back in stock. Then there are the Fluence XL8F towers, which I know are $99 more per pair, but they are the superior performers in every way, provided you pair them with an amplifier that can properly control their built-in eight inch subwoofers. Do that and these speakers can potentially embarrass loudspeakers costing twice as much with their full range prowess. That and the Fluence's mid-range has that warmish tone like the Yamaha that pairs very well with a wide range of music. The high frequencies are smooth and non-fatiguing and likely better than both the Yamaha and Yamo designs. Of course, there are other affordable options such as the Polk Audio T50, Polk Audio Monitor 70, the Sony SS CS3, and Klipsch R610F, just to name a few. I have not listened to all of these loudspeakers personally, so I can't say exactly how they stack up against the Yamaha and whether or not they're better, but given that the Yamaha isn't the runaway winner on its own, I think these are worth taking a look at as well. And if you'd like to see any of these speakers reviewed on this channel, leave me a comment down below. Like I said at the beginning of this review, when we requested the Yamaha NSF 150s, they were deeply discounted. And my feelings about them at that price were simple. If you were on an extremely tight budget, but were on the market for a tower speaker that looked and sounded good, the Yamaha should be on your short list. Because at under $300 a pair, there's a lot to like. However, at full retail of just under $500 a pair, their shortcomings are less excusable because there are speakers that are built better and manage to sound better for less than the Yamaha NSF-150. So the Yamahas are an option, but they wouldn't be my pick. So that's it. That is my review of the Yamaha NSF-150 tower speaker. What did you think? Well, I mostly am in agreement with you. Mostly? I, yeah, mostly. I I definitely think that the Yamo S809 is a much better choice if you're wanting a tower speaker at the same price point. Okay. Um I I feel a little bit differently in terms of um I think you were a little bit harsh on the build quality. I agree with you. 
there's a lot. They're a bit of a hot mess. <laughs> but I think if you can stand back, they're not that bad, you know. And for you know me, I really am not a fan of just a plain black speaker. Yeah. Um, because I think that a lot of times the plain black speaker, they uh, companies try to do a little bit too much with it. Okay. And if you're going to go with a plain black speaker, just let it be, just keep it minimal and simple. Mm-hmm. And I think that Yamaha does a good job in that respect with these. And like you and I have talked about before, if I don't look too hard, they do remind me of one of my favorite speakers, the Techniques G90. Of course, they are nowhere near the build quality. No. Don't get me wrong, guys. I can see the difference between a Techniques $5,000 speaker, whatever they cost, and this $500 one. You know, according to Andrew, almost pile of garbage. But... <laughs> okay. Can I, can I say one thing in defense? I don't want to cut you off, but one thing in defense. I, I agree with you whole, wholeheartedly. I agree with you. From our couch or from the kitchen or just in passing, they're totally passable, provided you don't put on the hideous grills. And there's been plenty of times that you guys have actually seen them in the background and asked about them because they do. They, they look okay. And even in the B-roll of this video, I think you're going to probably think that I'm overreacting. The reason why I'm making such a big deal about their construction is there's no doubt in my mind that some of you may actually go out and buy this loudspeaker, and I want to set your expectation accordingly. If you buy this and you get it and you can totally live with it, I got news for you. You're going to be happy. But if you buy this and I was really you know, complimentary about the sound within its limits, but I kind of glossed over, <laughs> gloss, but if I kind of glossed over the build quality and you got a cut because you know, picked it up by the base port to move it around or something like that. You, you're you going to come at me. Oh, they're going to come for you they're hard. Gonna come, you're going to come for me hard. And the truth is, is that for 95% of you, you are going to set these speakers and forget them. You're never going to touch them again. And if you do that, these speakers, like a lot of speakers, are going to last forever. That was the reason. That was the reason. No, and it makes sense. It makes sense. And I think that, that um, when it comes to design and build quality and things like that, we are uh, probably far more harsh on products um, or less forgiving of products yeah. because we it is a literal revolving door of gear that comes through this house. But overall, I, I wasn't as upset about the look of these speakers as I think Andrew was. One of the other things I disagree with you about is your, in your opinion, you think that the Fluence XL8F towers are the better pick yes. between this and the um, Yamaha. Now, I will give Fluence, they look like a million dollars compared to this um, particular speaker. But in terms of sound, I didn't really like the Fluence towers. I thought they were way, way better. Um, heavy in the bass department, which pretty much ruined everything else for me. Mm -hmm. And I didn't really enjoy that speaker. I think if you're looking at Fluence, I personally would choose the, um, the bookshelf. Oh yeah. Sibling to that lineup. Yeah. I think it's a less expensive. Of course, you're then going to have to buy a stand, but whatever. Um, it's a way better speaker and you can, you can fix those bass problems um, whereas if you go with the tower, the Fluence tower, you're kind of stuck. That's where I stand on that. I don't think that the Fluence sound better than these Yamaha towers. If it were me and I'm deciding between those two speakers, I'm going the Yamaha. Oh gosh, I disagree. But, but now one of the things that you've commented on about the Yamaha towers you said that there was a sand like the graininess the graininess yeah. now i don't personally hear that but if you watched our last video where we talk about measurements which you know go watch it we can break the internet again but um <laughs> you know andrew and i have different hearing uh high levels. frequency hearing yeah, levels, he, yes. mine is 
not as good. Yeah. So it's not bad. I'm giving you credit. Your high frequency hearing, honestly, a it's not as bad as I thought it was, and I think it even surprised you that oh, it's not as bad. For sure, because <laughs> the number of times I'm like, "What did you say?" is <laughs> even annoys me. Yeah. But um, yeah. So he and I have, uh, you know, a difference in our high frequency as far as what we can hear. Yeah. He is um a lot a lot more sensitive to high frequencies than I am. And so I personally, when he starts talking about this graining, graininess bit, I'm like, I don't know what the hell you're talking about. I don't hear it. So if you are like me and you are not as um, high frequency sensitive or you just don't yeah. have as great of hearing, you you may not hear that. Yeah, I would say that if you watched that last video, clicked on our links to take one of the unofficial high frequency hearing tests and found that maybe your high frequency hearing test taps out at maybe 14, 15 15. kilohertz, I think you're probably going to be fine. I I genuinely believe that. I am super sensitive to high frequencies, which is why I put that little bit of disclaimer on the end of that line where it can become fatiguing if you're sensitive to high frequencies. I am sensitive. So it definitely bothered me. Now, but I will, I, I should add this. It wasn't with all music. Even at loud volumes, it wasn't with all music. The, the tracks that bothered me the most with respect to the graininess was Dire Straits, um, which is a very high fidelity recording. We don't listen to it a lot because it got played to death by Dan Lofman over at Emotiva when I was there to the point where Dire Straits has been put on my band list. But we turned it on the other day with the Yamahas, and that album really is what accentuated that graininess for me. I was always aware of it. It was present. But that album, I was like, oh, yeah, there it is. And by the time you get to that point where the graininess, I think, would become very overtly noticeable for people, there's other things that the speaker's starting to fall apart, too, that you're just you're not going to want to listen to it anyway. The Yamahas, I, again, put them on the list. Give them a good look. If you can audition them, audition them. Just I would not be surprised if at the end you go with something else or someone goes with something else. I mean, if you can get the Yamo S809, to me, that's, yeah. you know, you're, yeah. the, the design quality and the sound is far superior. Yamaha makes some good speakers. They're, you could argue they are an industry standard in the pro audio world. For better or for worse, some of some of you professional musicians may sit there and say, "Oh my God, they're terrible." But that's right; they make those uh, the the desktop monitors, right? The, the studio monitors that are literally in any okay, not every studio, but the vast majority of the professional studios that I have ever been in. Oh, by the way, yeah, he has been in a studio yeah. before, um, and artists may have Genelec, they may have whatever. They, they may have their personal pick, like I like these studio monitors, but I can almost guarantee that they have a pair of old Yamaha NS speakers kicking around because they're so ubiquitous with a standard, if you will, that if it can sound good on these Yamahas, it's gonna translate. But um, I was glad we did it. I know I waffled here in the last week about should we can because they the price changed you know and and there's a lot of people that this is going to fall within the top end of their budget and so the ability to go up market even by a hundred dollars or more just isn't an option right so this is one you can look at yep well i'm good with that yeah you good So on that note, that is our review of the Yamaha NSF-150. Let us know what you thought of it down in the comments below. And my question of the day for you is this. What is your favorite Yamaha loudspeaker of all time? I know they've made a lot. So let's get a list going of your favorite Yamaha loudspeaker of all time. And some of you vintage fanatics out there, educate me. Come on, I need to know. I want to go down some rabbit holes on some Yamaha goodness. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up, like, and subscribe. Ring that bell so that you're notified when new videos come out. If you use any of the links that Christy left for you down below, know that that is a great way that you have continued to show your support for this channel and the work that we do here. And both of us, thank you very much. Follow me on Instagram at Recovering Audiophile. And that is it for us today. So remember, The only person who has to like the sound of your system is you. So happy listening, everybody. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you on the next video.
Bye. I want to say insane. Okay. Okay. And just like, let's take it down a notch. We don't need to. Oh, okay. Let's. We don't need to beat the this speaker. It's $500. Speaking of the cabinet, it's incredibly resonant. If you knock on it, you're just going to hear that hollow echo that resonates in your soul. <laughs> There's no bracing to support it. Nothing to keep it up. And there's no dampening materials, you know, like inside. <laughs> That's perfection.